Leatherhead's community radio station. This is Surrey Hills Radio. Sponsoring a show on Surrey Hills Community Radio is a great decision for your business. It's not just advertising, it's about being part of a vibrant, supportive community and empowering individuals to showcase their talents. At Surrey Hills Community Radio, we believe in providing opportunities for people of all ages and backgrounds to try something new, to shine, to build confidence. And now, businesses can be a vital part of this journey through our show's sponsorship opportunities. Ready to be part of something extraordinary? Email us on studio at surreyhillsradio.co.uk to find out more about show sponsorship. Surrey Hills Community Radio, where community matters. Surrey Hills Radio. I'm killing Testing, testing, one, two, one, two, testing, one, two. You're in concert. With Chris Stagg on Surrey Hills Community Radio. Let's get the show on the road. One love, one art. Let's get together and feel all right. <laughs> Yes, have pity on them, their chances. 
get together and feel all right indeed that sets the theme nicely well as a new biopic from bob marley coming up this week 14th of february it's released called one love um but that's from an album by ziggy marley his son um an album is called bob marley 75th celebration part one and there's was quite a bit of stuff on sky arts i think it was last night um about bob marley's various bits and pieces so uh, do you feel all right mr cole well, great things good <laughs> <laughs> we have a guest in the evening because and you know, the reason for that will become apparent very 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 soon um yes indeed and uh he's promised to leave all the records behind that he's brought with him this afternoon they're laid out across a table i don't think so <laughs> he doesn't think so especially the signed ones now i don't blame him at all um yeah let's get rid of that off my screen i've got six screens on the go here folks so let's get rid of that one but i'm gonna have this now um for my good friend let's have, have this one which one shall i have uh, i'm gonna have this one <laughs> Well, I hope you got your dancing shoes on, Sarah. I know you love to dance. Here's one for you. You won't know it, but it'll get your feet tapping, I'm sure. It's Nick Lowe, half a boy and half a man, live in Japan, 1998. <laughs>
Well, I hope you had a great birthday, Sarah, and I hope that makes you smile and get your feet tapping as well. Yes, why not indeed? Um, before I have a, quite a bit of a chat with my uh, good friend Pete Cole, who's in the studio with me this evening for a couple of hours, I'm going to play this one because this is the title of this song is definitely relevant to what this evening is about. Um, the artist I'm going to play this track from is Richard Hawley. Um, it's live at the Devil's Arse, which is a cave in the Peak District, 28th of April 2017. It's one of those instant live recordings I love so much from LiveHereNow.com. You can still find it on their website, actually. And it's one of those ones where they record the gig as it happens within 10, 15 minutes of the gig ending. You can walk out with a CD of the whole show or get it later on from the website. And I've got loads and loads and loads of them. I've even seen it being done. Um, but anyway, let's have this one. So this is uh, Richard Hawley and very relevant this evening. Nothing like a friend. Massive.
foodie fan who likes a Louisiana gumbo, a Spanish paella, all finished off with an eaten mess for dessert, the sort of meal where anything and everything is thrown into the mix? If you are, then my show, Fifty Shades of Rock, is tailor-made for you. You could be guaranteed to hear anything from the 17th century Baroque composer Al Benoni to the blues rock and boogie band ZZ Top and taking in virtually every musical style in between. Listen to Fifty Shades of Rock on the third Saturday of each month from 6 till 8 p.m. You're in concert with Chris Stagg on Surrey Hills Community Radio. That last track, Nothing Like a Friend, is relevant because of this next track by this artist. I'll tell you more about it after it, but enjoy. This is probably... I've been asked, thinking about this. It's the 10th anniversary of the radio station this year and 10th anniversary of my concert show, actually. And I'm thinking, how can I celebrate it? It's got to be, I don't know, at the very least, it'll be my 10 favourite live tracks um, or 10 favourite tracks full stop. This is within my 10, top 10 all-time favourite tracks and certainly live just has that extra oomph to me. So enjoy. Just enjoy it. This is where the evening really gets going for me. This is called Just.
give a damn Should we just say hey. If we just be Just because we can Hey! And I'm just me And you're just you These are just the things we do Another time or just another way But we're just here And we're just now We're just passing in When I was a bank manager in the 1990s, a customer of mine, a business customer, um, who was a record producer or an engineer, a recording engineer, something like that, he gave me a cassette, um, and it was not a sort of an official cassette, it was like a work in progress cassette, I think, but it was the album Genius and Grace by a man I'd never heard of by at the time called Billy Franks. And that song just, just is all, is, well, simply just been in my head ever since, quite frankly. And then, of course, as a, a live album came eventually, um, from the court, i.e. Fulham Court, to the Empire, as in Shepherd's Bush Empire. Um, so, Mr. Cole, were you there? Do you know what? I wasn't, actually. No. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> the massive fan that I am, for some reason, there was like a little blip uh, around that time. I didn't go to many gigs. Right. It wasn't anything to do with Billy Frank's little tour. It was more to do with me at the time. Right. And I, I know people that went to it, like yourself, and it was incredible, like, yeah. by all accounts. So, yeah. Did you know him by then? Did oh, you? yeah. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. followed him before then. Yeah. So, I mean, how how did you originally come to know Billy Franks? Well, he fronted the uh, the legendary Faith Brothers. Yeah. Well, uh, a se seven-piece band with yeah. lots of brass and, and amazing keyboards from Henry. Um, and I saw them sporting the alarm. Um, 22nd of May, 1985. Oh, sweet 16, uh, <laughs> wet me on the ears, um, loved the alarm at that point, and that was basically my first gig, and then wow. they come out as a support band, I thought, blimey, there's loads of them, <laughs> you've seen like hundreds on stage, it's like a soul seven, band or something, yeah. you know, it was like a seven piece band, and, and they just blew me away completely, I mean, I literally, I, I remember being stood there, mouth wide open, in, in awe and got converted on the spot literally I mean it's funny because it was a really hot and sweaty sold out Civic Hall in Guildford yeah but I remember having goosebumps right but w weird thing when you're hot and sweaty and you've got goosebumps <laughs> it's, it's quite odd I mean it's happened a few times since but that was the first time right. musically uh, yeah well that's a, that's a turning point yeah I mean to be supporting the alarm as well I mean Mark Peters is a great guy I'm um, still going strong now thankfully yeah so, yeah, yeah. They, they love the alarm still but I mean so, first proper gig was wow. the Fate Brothers, and wow. uh, started a long <laughs> obsession with music. I mean, not just a liking music, an absolute obsession. Anyone knows me, yeah, knows how obsessed I am with music. So, um, yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, I remember. So, I mean, yeah, that customer gave me the cassette of Genius and Grace, which is fantastic. Um, later on down the line, I don't, and again, I don't know when, I wish I still had the email, but I, I saw, some, I think I must have looked on Billy's website or something, and I saw that he had, like, five albums for sale as downloads, so you bought it direct. I mean, this is really, really, really early days of internet and stuff, probably. Um, late 90s, early 2000s, whatever. Um, so I bought the five albums for us download from Billy, an email from Billy. Here's the links, blah, blah, blah. Um, happy days. Um, I wish I'd kept that email, but whatever. Um, and I eventually, I eventually, I've still got those. Um, my son, because he knew how to, and I didn't, because I was technically incompetent, he put them onto CD for me, um, which I still got. Um, 
but and also recently I've, it's on iTunes G, that uh, Court to the Empire live albums on iTunes amongst others so I got it from there as well just to sort of have it as sort of like a well it's top quality anyway but it's just kind of nice to have it on a different device that way I'm just old fashioned like that it's just, <laughs> just nice to have it but you tell me there's no CD available so. um, I might stand corrected there but I don't think it ever was yeah I can't, I've not seen I mean I've looked and I've looked and I've looked on the various tinternet sites and I can't see it anywhere not even listed anyone, anyone know out there yeah let us listening? know yeah let me know chris at surreyhillsradio.co.uk or pete if you know pete um, let us know but I can't it's not even listed on discogs as being a release so I don't know whatever it's weird I mean, but he, lovely lovely man but zero business sense <laughs> well that's normal there are yeah. artists <laughs> aren't there I mean before this show this evening uh, this evening I did an unsigned artist show from two to four and it's like um yeah it's like some some artists send you their social media links and they've got the whole lot and they're active on them all the time and some of them are not doing any of them it's like are you serious this is a, this is a music hyphen business folks so uh yeah i recently interviewed had the pleasure and joy of interviewing claire grogan um altered images and um yeah we were talking about that as well really it's yeah it's it's a business you have to i mean she was talking about making like a business plan to know where you want to get to and how to get there and what sort of steps along the way you have to do not a written formal business plan but having an idea where you're going so oh dear yeah that's good stuff um well, we'll chat an awful lot about Billy this evening, but one of the things I'm going to talk about is um, the book from Billy, A Far Cry from Sunset. And I want to read you, before we go to the half-hour point, um, the bit on the back. So, if you're sitting comfortably, folks, I'll begin. This is what it says on the back cover of this great book. Um, the adventures we had and the people we met changed my life profoundly, not only its present, but also how I view its past. Apart from our struggles with managers, publicists, security, and even one or two of the artists themselves, we ran into so many people from ordinary walks of life, cab drivers, hotel porters, and fans standing in line to see their heroes, who couldn't do enough to help or encourage us on our journey. For one long hot summer, we lived life so brilliantly, so full of laughter and a gathering sense of achievement, that I wondered if the artists we were pursuing ever got to see life in anything like the same way. In contrast, they seem so protected, so hidden away, so cut off from the world that towards the end of our travels, they th the thought occurred to me at that point in time, I wouldn't swap one year of their lives for one day of ours. So there you go. And out of that, or perhaps you'll correct me, there's a film Tribute This! Mm exclamation mark which you can find on youtube i strongly recommend um you watch it it's really good I and mean, it's kind of the story that that book is more than just the film but it talks about the film it's got other bits and pieces in it as well which we'll probably touch on this evening as well but it talks about the pursuit of artists to play um well, to do a covers album of Billy's songs and approaching these well-known artists, some of whom I'm going to play tracks from this evening, not Billy's songs, sadly, but uh, the ones uh, that the, the ones that they've done themselves. But yeah, he tried to get these people to, to sort of do a cover of one of his songs. Um, well. So you read the book, I shan't spoil it for you, and watch the film, I shan't spoil it for you. But yeah, you had a cameo in that, didn't you, Mr. Cole? Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an an off-camera, off-voice cameo, but you were there. Yeah. It involves MySpace, if you remember that first. MySpace, we'll talk about MySpace a bit later on, actually. Um, before we do that, let's just have this, because we're up to the half hour or so. Are you a foodie fan who likes a Louisiana gumbo, a Spanish paella, all finished off with an eaten mess for dessert? The sort of meal where anything and everything is thrown into the mix? If you are, then my show, Fifty Shades of Rock, is tailor-made for you. You could be guaranteed to hear anything from the 17th century Baroque composer Albinoni to the blues rock and boogie band ZZ Top, and taking in virtually every musical style in between. Listen to Fifty Shades of Rock on the third Saturday of each month from 6 till 8 p.m. You're in concert with Chris Stagg on Surrey Hills Community Radio. Yes, indeed. Well, one of the artists approached, um, in fact, we just played Billy Franks and Just, which is fantastic, but he was going to get Bruce Springsteen, no less, to cover Just for him, and I think Bruce has missed a trick by not doing that, but whatever. I mean, these, these people get so many people requesting stuff to, for them or whatever that I'm sure it's just like, I don't know, it's just one of those many, many things they get asked to do for people, isn't it? If only he'd known or heard the song and wondered, seen how great Just was, he might have done it. But anyway, let's have a track by Bruce Springsteen, but not one that you'll be familiar with. This is um, from a, a box set 
set for CD, the 25th anniversary Rock and Roll Hall of Fame concerts. Um, this is Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band um, with Darlene Love, and it's, well, a good title track for our Billy Franks thing this evening. A fine, fine boy. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, Pete mentioned a minute ago, Guildford Civic Hall, as was. It's now G Live in Guildford, still a music venue, a bit plusher than it was when it's Civic Hall days. For the Civic Hall. <laughs> There's loads and loads of great bands have played the Civic Hall in Guildford. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've been backstage to people, like guest, guests and stuff. I've there. been lost backstage, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> Spinal Tap style. <laughs> uh, yeah, they knocked it down and rebuilt it as G Live, so it's still a great venue. And um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was a bit of a, a dive back in the day, but it was a place loads and loads of well known bands play there, that's for sure. And so you saw the Faith Brothers supporting the alarm. 22nd of May 1985. Yeah, 40 years next year. How's that possible? So, what is it? Music keeps us young, doesn't it? So, so we know because you've seen it, the alarm set was recorded and was released um years and years later like early in the last few years mike peters found about a bunch of tapes including i think the sound guy passed away and his family gave him the box of tapes that wow. he kept for like decades right and yeah it was a uh, the whole set from the civic hall in guildford and i somewhat illegally uh ripped a copy for myself i think i put it on youtube um right but yeah I mean, Mike's quite prolific on releasing official bootleg kind of live. I mean, that also. would be a great album from that. It's so the last night of the tour, the absolute tour, which they did with the Faith Brothers. Yeah. Um, and Guildford was added later. So it's not on a lot of the posters and things. Yeah. Um, but 
both bands were absolutely on fire by that point after a massive UK tour, as you can imagine. Yeah, you, know, you can hear it in the recordings. I mean, you're about to play one of the songs, aren't you? New well, yeah, you would say the alarm, but well, presumably the whole set was recorded. But how many songs have been released from the Faith Brothers set? Twenty second of May, nineteen eighty five. Three, three. Yeah, yeah. It should be. It'd be nice. But there's a lot of stuff in the vaults that maybe Lee from the band will finally, finally release it. There uh, you go, into, Lee. Into if the you're wild. listening, a little <laughs> request for you, our friend. Uh, yeah, all but the unreleased stuff. We're just as many people like myself who were dying to hear yeah. unreleased please, material. Please, please, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm begging you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Re release it, release it. So, where is this track found? It. It's on. Oh, you've caught me on the hop there. Well, it's, on, on, it's on. It's on. I know it's a, it was a B side originally, wasn't it? But you, you yeah. mentioned to me it's on Eventide, the two disc reissue. It's on there. I mean, that goes. That's even that's sold out, and it's like gold dust now. Yeah, yeah. To get that CD double reissue. Um, it, well, I can tell you, it's the B side of a stranger on home ground. There you go. I failed my mastermind <laughs> quiz. No, 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 no. It's not matter. It's fine. You'll, you'll find it on iTunes if nowhere else. If you, listen, if you look on Discogs or somewhere, I'm sure you'll find it as well. If you listen really carefully, you can hear me in the in the crowd here. All oh, right. So, yeah. is this your first uh, appearance I've, on audio recording? Then? Yeah, it's age sixteen. Oh, right. <laughs> So this is the Faith, well these are the Faith Brothers, um, recorded in Guildford, so 10 miles from where we're sitting, 22nd of May 1985, Pete's first uh, gig, um, where he got converted to the Faith Brothers, and you'll listen carefully, you might hear it <laughs> in the audience as well. Um, yeah, great, great stuff. More please, Lee, yeah, let's have this one. But this is Newtown, brackets, The Promise of Albion. Go on, make a noise, go on, one minute, right, make as much noise as you like. This one is called Newtown, the promise of Albion. It's now racking, watch while it's still down, bullet bubble dog recession.
Thanks very much indeed for a really warm welcome down here in Guildford. Thanks very much. From the Five Brothers, from Lee, myself, Billy. Thanks very much. See you all again very soon. Thanks very much indeed. Off the band members, then were the seven there, including Billy. Yeah, I think they were. Yeah, they? yeah. <laughs> well, if, should you give them all a shout? Who, who they all are? Yeah, go for it. So we have Billy Frank's guitar and vocals, obviously. Yeah, Lee Heron's on the bass. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Please, yeah, please Lee, release the rest of it. <laughs> if the rest of it is as good a quality sound as that, we want it, please. And he's got his brother Mark. He played guitar as well. Yeah. Mark Heron's with Henry Trezice on the keyboards. Uh, Mark Waterman on the saxophone. Will Chipper on the trumpet, and last but no means least, Gus, aka Steve Howlett, on the drums. Wow. Um, yeah, there's like bouncing around on the stage. Uh, they were just loving playing live because you just tell, really infectious. Um, there's like the sax um, and the trumpets just all being waved in the air, and yeah, just wow, memories. I can imagine, well, well not P Mike Peters because he's not like that, but I mean, some headlining bands would be really frightened by having a band that good, a support band, wouldn't they? But I mean, much for a certainly entertaining evening having two great bands playing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like, you know, the <laughs> starting point, <laughs> as I said before, of a lot of obsession with music. Yeah. So they've got a lot to answer for, the Faith Brothers <laughs> and, and the alarm. How many, I mean, do you know how many times you saw the Faith Brothers? Not well, actually, himself, but the Faith Brothers itself. Only the, the Faith Brothers, only twice. But I was I was a young lad in those days. I saw them in May 85, as, as I keep going on about. Um, and then the second time, there's a little story with that, actually. Yeah. The second time was sporting Julian Cope at the same venue, Kilford Civic Hall. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I must have been... I'm not sure what, what month it was, but if it was before August, I was, uh, you know, sort of 18, becoming 19 that year. Still a teenager. Uh, Faith Brothers was outstanding as always. Julian Cope came on. Sorry to offend any Cope fans out there, but he was rubbish. Oh. Uh, didn't inspire me at all, so I thought, I'm going to go and get a drink at the bar. Uh, wandered up the, the... It's the bar at the top, those who remember the Civic Hall. There's, yeah. two, there's a yeah. bar on the, on the same level as the gig. Yeah. Without some stairs, balcony... Sort of yeah. balcony bar kind of yeah, thing yeah. wandered up there to uh, only see Billy Franks chatting to Rick Butler from the jam <laughs> and I'm like yeah, well. I'm like who wow what well, um, and then Billy changed his t-shirt <laughs> he was wearing a U2 t-shirt a New Year's Day um, t-shirt with the um, Peter Rowan the U2 boy yeah. um, and so was I Oh, wow. so I'm like whoa and Bill sort of spotted me and sort of smiled and sort of Moved and waved me over, you know, and I sort of said hello and can't remember the conversation, but it's probably a bit embarrassing because I was a teenager. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's when I first met Betty Frank, so wow. it was um, 1987. Yeah. So, um, weirdly enough, I actually saw Bums of Rick Butler only last weekend. Right. So, but I know him a little bit because he's from Woking and so yeah, am I, yeah, you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, that's yeah. another story for another day, but we're here wow, for the Fake Brothers. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so only twice, but Billy Frank's 
solo acoustic or with a band <laughs> lost count yeah a lot of times um well, we're gonna have some more billy frank's live tracks a bit later on in the show that's for sure um we, we got them um yeah god well, can i sort of get my thoughts back into gear let's just have this My name's Chris Braid and I present the White Label Show on Surrey Hills Community Radio every Friday night from 5 till 7. It's an all-request show with a theme each week. So if you want to get in touch with me, Facebook, Twitter, White Label Chris, Chris White Label. So that's Friday night, 5 till 7, White Label, Surrey Hills Community Radio. See you then. You're in concert with Chris Stagg on Surrey Hills Community Radio. When you mentioned the U2 shirts there, and I've had those my, myself in the past, and of course they ended up supporting U2 at some point later on down the line. Is that Milton Keynes? Milton Keynes. There's a longest oh, day the thing longest, on. That's right. The raining, the raining it, one. It rained. All, I mean, I, again, I didn't go. I don't know why, but probably because I was young and no one else wanted to go. Um, but the story goes that it poured with rain the moment the paper was finished. <laughs> <laughs> they're set so they only band the plate in the dry and in the, the you know, in the sun i think again anyone out there can you any, can you tell me otherwise i've got a great bootleg recording of that of their oh, set oh wow i mean it's not brilliant quality it's recorded obviously on the tape recorder it's yeah, a yeah, bag yeah yeah but it's just like it's nice to have a memento isn't it yeah absolutely yeah, remember where you were and when and the circumstances and so stuff. i didn't go i mean so only a favor of us were twice as i said and i I probably could have gone more than that, but before the internet, didn't we know when they were playing? And yeah, you know, yeah, people forget how difficult it was to find out unless you read the sort of the music press every week and and stuff. There was no Facebook or MySpace or whatever or yeah. Twitter or X or it was Google <laughs> or that kind of stuff. You just had to sort of yeah read the papers and find out what's happening, and then you send off your postal order or check for a ticket or something, and stamped hope you got allocated envelope. one, yeah. yeah, or postal order, yeah, stamped address envelope and all that kind of stuff, and then live in hope and pray that you got a ticket sent back in the post rather than a rejection letter so, <laughs> yeah i mean what was, what was billy like as a person really funny <laughs> i mean it comes Very across quick. that way in the film and, and also in the book as well which is kind of self-deprecating and quite funny yeah as i said rubbish businessman lovely man um i'll tell you a funny story about i've got a lot of them so i think i'll tell you the, 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 the funniest one <laughs> um i found out where he lived don't know how but I did and um, I quite often used to go to the King's Head in Fulham f for gigs um, and I'd, I'd drive past his flat I wouldn't didn't actually know where the door was yeah. but I knew the window yeah and he said park up so I'd go Billy and his head would pop out <laughs> and we'd, we'd have a little chat um, I did actually go in the flat once I think but I don't know it's, it's all like 35 years ago or something yeah, yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, a long yeah. time long ago long time ago yeah um, but one day I was in his flat and the phone his phone rang and he's oh, just let me answer the phone and all I heard was turns to buy their own bloody album and I was just like who, <laughs> who, who, who was that oh that was the that was the, the edges the edge from you two is people doing the sort of quote with his fingers yeah. people they've only got a solo album out and there's a new Faith Brothers album coming out and can they have a copy and I just want to go and buy their own bleeding copy because <laughs> apparently he's after um Billy for Mother Records, which right. was U2's record YouTube. label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just thought, what are you doing? You're, you're turning down the edge. Yeah, promotional <laughs> stuff. Yeah. I mean, oh my God, the biggest band on the planet, even back then, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, Billy, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Edge would have, well, no, the Edge probably would probably not take umbrage. You'd probably think, oh, that's quite impressive. But it wasn't actually the Edge on the phone. No, no, it was, it was his, people. his people. His people. Or yeah. Mother Records' people. But yeah. you know, it must have been, oh no, it must have been after the Faith Brothers split. That's why he was. But uh, so I, I have no idea of the time scale on this one, yeah, but that yeah, definitely yeah. happened. And that was quite funny. Yeah. I mean, how long did the Faith Brothers exist as an entity? Um, from 84 till about 88. 88 I believe but again yeah. anyone out there can correct me please yeah. do uh, they did two albums for um, for Siren a subsidiary of Virgin yeah um, two cracking albums um, even tied on a human sound which 
We can't seem to get anywhere these days. I'm sure he's on. Is it on Spotify? I don't know. I don't, I don't use Spotify. Let's. Uh, if I sort of become aware of a track I quite fancy or whatever, I'll listen on Spotify see if I like it, and if I like it, I buy it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. I don't stream stuff because I'm being on radio. Radio, we can play at this on Surrey Hills Radio. We can play what we own. We can't play stream stuff. So as long as we own it and bought it somehow, um, then we can play it. Um, I mean, you mentioned Facebooks again. So sorry, Faith Brothers. So you have a Facebook page, keeping the Faith Brothers. Is that for all things Billy as well? Then. Oh yeah. yeah and all the spin-off bands and just anything related really and just a lot of camaraderie I can never that word friendship Camar- camaraderie that's the one yeah yeah uh, on there camaraderie um, yeah. in fact that's a very good point I should say something rather poignant now I run this page alone now I used to run it with a lovely lady called Becky Banning who sadly passed away in the last few months right um, so this whole chat everything we're doing is, is dedicated in her memory yeah dedicated to you Becky yeah yeah, yeah. R.I.P. In fact, I found a CD today um, with a little post on it which she sent me the CD I thought I didn't have <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I found two copies it's true I was, I was watching him as he was doing it yeah um, and that sort of maybe sort of well up a little bit because it's a little note from Becky saying enjoy Becky you know yeah. kiss Bless her. Bless well, her he heart. enjoyed the album and he enjoyed your company, that's for sure, I think. Yeah. So, um, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, good stuff. So, yeah. So, Keeping the Faith Brothers, if you're on Facebook, folks, is the place to look at anything to do with Faith Brothers. There is an official Faith Brothers page, but it's not that active, really. Right. But for, for chat... Um, does, uh, Lee, does Lee get involved with your page? He's he's on there, but he doesn't... Uh, he He... <laughs> He's got other things happening. He's got other things happening, and he you know, doesn't like to dwell on the past, whereas that's what I ever do. No, sure. <laughs> well, it's like that when I was chatting to Claire Grogan recently, plug, plug, 4th of January, find it on my page. But, uh, um, yeah, she doesn't like... I was, I was pressing her for like, BBC in concert or sessions or whatever archive kind of releases, and she's she's on it, and she's going to do it, she says. Um, but she doesn't dwell on the plot. She's got a recent an album came out uh, a year or so ago, and she's got another one coming in due time, whatever, two-album deal with, with Alter Dimit, her current version of Alter images so yeah she doesn't want to dwell on the past for exactly the same reason um speaking of the past and it's a long time ago um july the 13th 1985 does that ring a bell to you july the, oh live aid live aid day yeah hottest day of the year i wasn't there because i was getting married at the time um not very much so not many miles from wembley stadium actually but here's a track from uh, one of the artists that uh, billy and co were pursuing in the, the book a far cry from sunset and tribute this to the movie um so elvis costello was there um and billy was going to get him to do billy's song the sacred art of leaving um to no avail they did actually meet him if you watch it on the film and read it in the book they actually met elvis costello briefly anyway um at a a sort of a bank state as a gig somewhere but uh this is uh, elvis costello solo no no attractions because purely him recorded um at Live Aid, but wasn't the Face Brothers offered Live Aid? Was there something I've read that in the yeah, book? Yeah, and, and legend has it they turned it down. Yeah, again, not you know, for business sense, but yeah, yeah, the usual, the usual business sense. But people didn't know what it was, did they? I mean, some people that just turned it down and then realise that the error of their ways afterwards is such a, a great success. I think they thought that people might have thought that we'll do it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, kind of get that, but at the same time do it for the wrong reasons Bill <laughs> yeah do it for the wrong reasons oh, well, I don't know I mean people just did it to support Geldof because Geldof insisted that they do it didn't they because they spoiled the Boontown Rats you see that's yeah. probably why you know, he knew them right. okay. about the well, year they were before. local for one point because they were in Chessington uh, they, in those days and the uh, Jerry Cott the original guitarist is only infection just down the road because I know Jerry so yeah anyway let's have this track from Elvis Costello it's a cover it's Live Aid 30 July, 13th of July 1985 um, yeah Elvis Costello I wonder what happened to him him. In fact, they just uh, announced a tour actually with Steve Naive, but uh, and more about that some other time. But this is him and a little cover. Enjoy, oh, you'll know what it is when he starts it. Oh, yeah! I want you to help me sing this old northern English folk song. There's nothing you can do that can't be done There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung Nothing you can say but you can learn how to play the game It's easy Nothing you can make, you can't 
to Surrey Hills Community Radio. In the heart of Surrey Hills, we're not just a radio station, we're true believers in community togetherness. As we mark 10 years of broadcasting in 2024, this is your year more than ever to step into the studio and share your stories. Let us know about your charitable deeds, fundraising efforts and good news stories. Studio at surreyhillsradio.co.uk Celebrate together the diversity and dedication of our community, where every voice matters. Surrey Hills Community Radio, where your voice matters. Surrey Hills Radio. You're in concert with Chris Stagg on Surrey Hills Community Radio. One thing that sort of stood out in the film, it's also in the book, of course, uh, A Far Cry from Sunset, is, is the clip fairly early on where he's uh, trying to get Huey Lewis um, to do The Girl of Your Dreams, and so his friends that are with him making this movie with him, or for him, or yeah, with him um, on this road trip, uh, are in the... Well, I'll spoil it for you, but they're in the audience and they have some a banner, which you'll see how the banner's made by watching the film. Tribute this on, the, on YouTube. Um basically trying to get Huey Lewis to spot it, which he does, um, to sort of encourage him to do this cover song. And um, more than that, though, the, the concept was being, or well, that part of it was being filmed by the sort of the, the local news in America or whatever, and it got a feature on the news channel, which I found amazing. But uh, <laughs> Cheeky chaps. So, well, you have to be cheeky, don't you? You've got to be forthright. You can't just sit there and wait, can you? You've got to go be proactive. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I particularly like that quote on the back of the book, which I read earlier. Some of the play this um yeah this 
Yeah, it's a well-known Huey Lewis in the News song, of course. Um, check out Tribute List to see what I'm talking about. It's fairly early on in the film, though. It's definitely worth watching to see how they do it. Um, really good. Sadly, to no avail. But whatever, that wasn't the point in the end, as Billy alluded to on these books. Anyway, this is, or these are, Huey Lewis in the News and the Power of Love. Yes, would you please welcome our good friends from Oakland, California, the one, the only, Tower of Power Horns. Mighty, mighty, mighty. Just like last night, I'd like to dedicate this next one to Billy Rancher.
Yeah, do look at the tribute this uh, film and have a look and see. Um, or read the book. Do both. A Far Cry from Sunset. They're both excellent indeed. So the film's on YouTube, so no, there's no excuse really. Um, yeah, great. definitely worth a watch and see what I'm talking about with Huey Lewis and the news and see how their attempts to get Huey Lewis's attention, um, which they succeeded in, but not to the extent of playing a song of his but never mind whatever it was part of the road trip which was really really good um, have you got a best gig memory I mean we should play some Billy's live tracks in a minute but um, have we got a best a live track a um, best gig memory of seeing Billy solo I mean the place was obviously a, a turning point but he I, played a place called the Troubadour in Oz Court yeah. a lot um, going back sort of 15, 16 so it might be longer than that years ago yeah and it was him like a three piece band it's him uh, with with Lee on the bass and a couple of different drummers over the, over the years, um, including Keith uh, and, and Nigel. Um, Nigel, rest in peace as well. You certainly drowned, believe it or not. Oh wow! Yeah, um, those gigs were just. I couldn't put a finger on one particular, but they were just massive, sweaty, bouncing up and down, sing along with everyone. <laughs> it was just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, is the Troubadour the one where Prince Harry? Uh, yes, Prince yeah. Harry turned up and sang backing vocals with Billy. I mean, there's, there's photographic evidence out there as I well. I mean, it's, it's in the book. It's not on the film. It's in the book. It's relevant to the book. So it's additional stuff. It's in the book. Oh, yeah, it's not on the film. Um, I mean, I don't know what you think of Prince Harry generally. The media portrays him, but I read that in the book. And I thought I like Prince. Harry. Yeah, I like him because of I like him. And yeah, he befriended Billy Franks, and yeah. he became a good friend to him and supported him. And again, go back to the business. I remember that story about Billy being offered a large chunk of money by a, a vodka company or something to do with something. If, if Prince Harry would turn up and he turned it down on principle, and Prince Harry, Prince Harry says. Oh, what, do you think, what the words he says now, but um, you idiot or something like that, or words of that effect, he's like, oh, you should have done it, I'd have turned up for 10 minutes, you'd have got paid th 30 grand and we would all be happy, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem. And he's yeah. Like, but yeah, I'm quite impressed with Prince Harry. I mean, I know the media portrays him in a certain way, rightly or wrongly, and maybe... Oh, he stood, up to, he stood up to the royal family. He so. Well, he's kind of... I read that, I mean, yeah, I listened to that, and I thought... I'm a huge fan of punk stuff, obviously. Um, God Save the Queen by the Sex Pistols. And it kind of, what he's been revealing, to my mind, maybe it's simple and it's naive, I don't know, maybe to my mind, it's kind of what God Save the Queen is about. It's not anti the Queen or King or whatever. It's about pointing out how the institution works and who controls it. And um, yeah, so fair play to him. But I read that about Prince Harry in the book. And I thought, I really like you. Yeah. Yeah, same. <laughs> is it, is it and the Prince Oscorp William gig? appears in it as well. Is, is it the Oscorp yeah. gig? Apparently, he spotted in the the, um, the seats at the top, you know, yeah. at the balcony kind of thing. So, yeah, good old good old Prince Harry. Yeah, no, I'm I'm a big yeah. I like it. I like it. I mean, t take I mean, anything's in the media you can take with a pinch of salt anyway, can't you? But uh, oh, dear, that's amazing. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, let's have one of his live tracks then. So. Um, this was what the, the one taken. This was originally a tape he put out through his mailing list to try and sort of race yeah, and official race bootleg. Yeah, yeah. But I just love the recording because it just sounds like he's in the room with you, literally. Yeah. So I'm going to play "Behind, Beneath, Beyond." Is that okay to play that one first? Yeah, it's a nice gospel feel to this. Oh, okay. Well, this is live at the Old Leather Bottle, Wimbledon, 21st of August, 1992, and it's an official bootleg album. Was it a cassette or CD? A cassette. Yeah. Yeah, well, even, if I remember right, it didn't even have a track listing on it. Well done, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an official bootleg, so it doesn't really matter, does it? No, no. Um, so let's have this one. This is Billy Frank's um, official bootleg. So turn it up loud, folks, and enjoy it. Um, put out by Billy officially. Uh, yeah, Pete's kindly let me have the tracks for it so I can play it for you this evening. So here we are, Behind, Beneath, Beyond. <laughs>
receive communion in numbers Deliver a form within the fluid See the whole field in the play Turning as you live And see Behind the eyes, beneath the laws, beneath the prize, beyond the inner edge. Behind the cord, behind the tin, beneath the root, beneath the skin, beyond the outer heart. Getting through the town Take the road that takes you down Between the trees to the river's edge Follow the tide until the bridge Cross into the open field Sleep beneath the sun rather fabulous wasn't it yeah i should say that the original studio version of that is on betty's first solo release uh, after the fave brothers called it a day called mass um and that live version you just heard was just it was him and a guy called andy warrington who was in bill's post fave brothers sort of live band for a while um circa 92 wherever that was when that was recorded so um i just think it's a fantastic sort of cassette yeah you know, you know. official bootleg get my it ticks all my boxes yeah yeah again i don't give very much money out of it <laughs> it's through bill's style oh dear let's just have this first punk style covers punk concert tracks punk independent or unsigned artists and their original new music all these and more on the monthly punky bike show with me chris stagg every fourth monday 9 to 10 p.m online at surreyhillsradio.co.uk Let's go, let's carry on anyway. We've got another 45 minutes. Yes, so where's it all going to? Yeah, I was just, I don't know, if Billy was still around, um, we came in for a live session, that'd be good. But as, as you say, just listening to that in the studio, um, it just feels like it's in the room with you, doesn't it? It's, it's that intimate kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of, uh, if you get a whole, if anyone wants a copy of it, let me know. I'm sure the people won't mind because, you know, it was put out in 1992 or 20, you know, hang on, I can't even work it out. How long ago was that? A long time ago. Yeah, over, th over 30 years. So. Yeah, wow. God, or you could make a donation to you know, Betty's charity. You know, what's, what's Betty's charity? Well, tribute this was... Oh, I need to remember now. You got me on the spot again. Um, it was a charity to help young musicians. And I actually put on a Faith Brothers event um, a couple of years ago now. Yeah. 
Oh, this is awkward. <laughs> if, if, we, if we remember, we'll mention it. And if, if not, just drop Pete a note or me a note, Chris at sorry, and we'll, we'll yeah, let you know. Send a couple of that. quid or something or to, yeah. um, well, I remember what the charity's called. <laughs> uh, I'm sure Bill would love the idea of that. So, yeah. Um, well, any kind of musician's charity, I'm sure, would be close to his heart, wouldn't it? So, yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, let's have another artist that he was targeting, and actually somebody that they did actually meet and have a chat with, and uh, made some progress with, but uh, so, sadly, um, this artist didn't record Billy's song, which was the one he wanted, was This Evil Man, was the one he was aiming to get for this particular artist to sort of sing for him. Um, but here's uh, from an album called Tell Us The Truth, um, the live concert recording, which is well, to give you a flavour, it includes people like Billy Rag and this particular artist, Mike Mills from R.E.M. Um, yeah, quite a lot of stuff. And it's, well, Billy's song is, Billy Bragg's song on there, it's called The Price of Oil, which is about, so it's obviously to do with one of the Gulf Wars when it was deemed to be like, well, it's actually about the price of oil rather than anything more specific. Um, so Steve Earle is on the album. He's the artist that was targeted on the tribute to this movie. Um, so here's a track from Steve Earle. Um, it's simply called The Mountain. This is called The Mountain. Mind the cold when you rose in the morning for it was light. But when I'm in that dark hole, come back up at night. Deep and God 
God only knows all the secrets it keeps And there's a chill in the air Only miners can't feel And there's ghosts in the tunnels That the company sees Steve Earl from the Tell Us The Truth uh, compilation album. Yeah, I just love live tracks. They have more oomph to me. Um, we mentioned um, MySpace uh, earlier. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, in the book, you'll read it, A Far Cry From Sunset, um, one of the artists that uh, Billy was uh, trying to get to sing one of his songs, um, he wanted them to sing I Want To Be Your Country was a song he's trying to get them to sing, but... Uh, and it was you, Pete, wasn't it? You were the one that suggested they do this. So what did you suggest? Well, well, it's well, off camera and off audio on the <laughs> film, but tribute this. But what did you do? Well, well they they wrote me just sort of how do you how do you use MySpace? I said, well, you find them and you send them a request. You uh, you a, click a friend request. A friend request. And that's this is before Facebook, folks. So yeah, yeah it was a similar, you know, same sort of ethos. Yeah, yeah, and um, they did that. And off, I remember a strange phone call coming through. <laughs> it's like a bit strange. But I didn't want to be. So who phoned you then? Was it Billy? Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, well, yeah, you, you, and they thought, naively thought that that was the end. Of, you know, that they were friends with the, the artist, or I don't quite remember what happened next. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, I remember the strange phone call coming through. So in my own little way, I'm on a film. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I mean, it could be anyone, but I knew it was me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I remember getting the phone that's call. Fair enough. Yeah, and yes, Billy or whoever did send a MySpace. Well, presumably Billy sent a MySpace friend request, i.e., a precursor to Facebook friend request. Uh, he did send a friend request to Tom Petty, and eventually, as you'll read in the book, Tom Petty did accept his friend request. <laughs> he didn't send, didn't sing the song. Did, for didn't him, send but... a message or anything. Just <laughs> sent a friend request. <laughs> so, so let's have a Tom Petty live song. This is uh, from another Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This is the best of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum concerts. It's a three CD set. Lots of interesting compilations on these Rock and Roll Hall of Fames. Um, so this is Tom Petty um, with Jeff Lynn, Steve Winwood, and Danny Harrison. Um, yeah, which of course it goes back to that uh, supergroup. It did, it? What's that supergroup called? Travelling Wilburys. Yeah, Travelling Wilburys, yeah. Um, which included George Harrison, of course, and Jeff Lynn and Bob Dylan and Roy Orbison. Anyway, this is um, Tom Petty with those guests on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and it's a Travelling Wilbury song Handle With Care Situation 
Station. This is Surrey Hills Radio. Attention all musicians. Join us on Transmission, our dedicated radio show spotlighting the creative brilliance of new music without genre limitations. Submit your fresh tunes for a chance at your first airplay. We promise to listen to every track you send our way. But wait, there's more. How about a live radio session at our Leatherhead Studios? Reach out to us for further details. Let's make music together. Ready to share your sound? Email your MP3 and bio to mymusic at surreyhillsradio.co.uk Surrey Hills Community Radio, where your music matters. Surrey Hills Radio. You're in concert with Chris Stagg on Surrey Hills Community Radio. Yes, and we're into the last half hour of this month's show. It's always on the second Sunday, 5pm to 7pm, the monthly Ian Concert Show, almost entirely live tracks, uh, unless there's a track I couldn't find that's live, um, of a particular song I like, but saying Just from Billy Franks is definitely in my all-time top ten, whether it's the studio version, which is awesome on Genius and Grace, um, or the live version on from Court to the Empire, which you'll find on iTunes, if nowhere else. Uh, that's pretty, we, we've discovered where that charity is, isn't it? What's the charity it was involved that Mick, he, Billy wants you to get involved Youth with? Music. Youth Music is the one, so you yeah. You Google it, you'll find, find yeah, it. So if you want a copy of that official bootleg, and we'll play another track from it, actually, before too long, um, get in touch with Pete and uh, make a donation to Youth Music um, and in Billy's memory. Just so. send me your screen grabber that you've done it, not that I don't believe you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and... Yeah, I'm sure Billy won't mind. Or no, it's promoting his music, isn't it? I mean, it's it's only die-hard fans that kind of buy official bootlegs anyway. So yeah, yeah, from yeah. a cassette that was put out. Well, I don't know how many were made up. The yeah, copy of them were made, but yeah. definitely worth having. Yes, absolutely, definitely worth it. Well, so another track from it a bit later on towards the end of the show, anyway. Um, so apart from keeping the Faith Brothers Facebook page, what else are you involved with? I know you've, you've had, well, I know, had a live <laughs> session with one of your friends or an artist that came in a few months well, back for transmission, didn't we? Yeah. Where, where do I start? Um, <laughs> I promote mainly charity events. Uh, I'm dabbling in stuff that isn't charity at the moment, but um, I'm sort of helping out with um, Eddie McDonald from The Alarm. Oh, yeah? Well, there's The Alarm. Who, um, yeah. yeah um, who have thought that, yeah childhood hero would be your mate <laughs> <laughs> but it happens, it happens. Um, well I've got to know Billy I mean it, you know he started out as a bit of a hero well he's still, well, he's still our heroes which makes a nice change yeah. you know you can meet heroes and they don't always yeah, there's always Turn that, out what always always that be. fear, isn't it? That you meet your heroes and it shatters all the illusions, but in some cases, like Billy and, and Eddie and people like that, it, it doesn't. It just yeah. confirms what you already know about them, yeah. I mean, if I can give you a quick plug, um, I am doing... What what I do, it goes out under Blag Promotions. Um, blag has been quite appropriate, really, because I just <laughs> try and blag everything. Well, people who know me, but it's all because it's for charity, so please don't want to be asking for money. Um, so on the 30th, no, the 30th, the Blag Promotions, the 30th birthday party, and I've been doing it for 30 years, I've been uh, doing this, <laughs> crazy fool that I am. I'm putting on um, a charity event uh, in, in aid of Home Start Surrey, which is like a domestic abuse charity that help out um, sort of people, mainly mainly women that have um, left abusive relationships, and have got nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, we've got the landings. We've got the spirals. I've seen the landings in Guildford, Holroyd Arms Suburbs. Yeah. Great venue in Guildford. Very yeah. uh, new AV, 80s sounding, which is straight up, right up my street. Um, yeah. Another Facebook page to look at is Undercover Festival and Events. Loads and loads of stuff they put on at uh, Guildford. A great evening out and not expensive either. So, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted your flow there. So, yeah, landings definitely worth watching. I bought their album when I saw them. Yeah. They've got a new album coming out, which may be out in the time for that gig. So it's the 20th of April yeah. at Farnborough Football Club. Yeah. The Landings, the Spirals, the Beelines, Wob and Billy Liberator, who you know. Yeah, Billy, uh, Billy, Billy's the one that came in with Pete last time to do a live session for yeah. my transmission show, which is yeah. Sunday afternoon. Yeah, uh, We've got um, DJ Ed, Ed Liner, and compare the crazy Andy Clark. Um, tickets are eight pound in advance from We Got Tickets, ten pound on the door. Starts at four in the afternoon when Billy opens up proceedings. Um, come on down, have a party. There might be even be cake. Oh, oh yes. 
Oh, uh, a big birthday cake. Um, <laughs> so it's, yeah, so it's the thirtieth birthday bash. Yeah, on yeah. Saturday, twentieth of April, Farnborough Football Club. So oh, um, there you go. And then hopefully you'll be hearing some of the bands that are playing on this very show, or well, maybe not this show, but another show. Yeah, that, um, oh, there you go. So, um, yeah. And if you, if you've missed what he's just said, then this show is going out live, as you can tell, being recorded in the background now. So within sort of ten minutes of the show ending, the catch up link is available. Um, yeah, I mean, drop Pete a note or a me a note. I'll send it to you but otherwise just go on to the website surreyhillsradio.co.uk and listen again you'll find it there in concert radio show today's date the 11th of february um also if you look in the comments on the catch-up link you'll see the playlist because i'm compiling it as i go along and it'll be on the in the comments there uh on the in concert radio show facebook page as well so it's, it's all there and you can sort of scroll through the show and find the details of what pete just mentioned and i should you. say it all links to the whole reason i'm here today is if it wasn't for the alarm and the Faith Brothers way back in 1985 I wouldn't be doing any kind of promotion it inspired me to this day yeah and music you know. keeps us young doesn't it whether we're playing it or we're just enjoying it and a bit of retail therapy now and again buying some it, stuff it, yeah. I, I can put out well actually on the balls of coop but I could put if I had any hair I would have had to pull out trying to put it all together you know it can keep you old as well <laughs> <laughs> mm. well people can be stressful I know that yeah people oh, it's, it's, it's yeah. a nightmare the build up and all the promotion trying yeah. to get it covered in the press but when the bands are on stage and it's happening and you're getting that feeling from live music it makes it all worthwhile so um yeah well it's a bit i mean i know the undercover promoter guy often tears his hairs out or mick about, yeah mick about um ticket sales and stuff but on the night it's invariably very good and it's great value for money you can't go wrong and i'm the same with the radio to a point i don't relax until i hear the first song going out on the studio system out there so i know it's going out to the world which is making it work hello world hello world hello world it's online to the world um yeah let's have um a song of hope actually for the world um i haven't got time for this one let's have this one this is a song of hope um healing warmth of sun uh, come to, to sorry healing warmth of sun to come to all is the kind of th theory behind this song well it's a band that recorded their first two albums about 400 yards from where i'm sitting or where we're sitting this evening in surrey sound studios in kingston road the studios is no longer there the building is it's now a ladies fitness gym called curves um but the building surrey sound is still there um but the band is the police so yeah they traveled down from south london to record their first two albums in Leatherhead and there's pictures to prove it um, so well I hope this broadcast is doing this for you I healing warmth um, of sun to come to you a song of hope this is or these are the police it's from their certifiable reunion tour and the track is called Invisible Sun oh, tune <laughs>
Well, yeah, there you go, the police. And um, in fact, yeah, Peach just said to me, look up Conspiracy of Hope Tour, which is the um, Amnesty International one, and Sting, or the police, but did a version with Bono. Whether that's actually on the release or not, I don't know. I know the Conspiracy of Hope album is available on uh, iTunes. I should have a look later. I'll move myself a note. Because if it's well, the video is definitely up there, so yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Well, we talked about U2 earlier. I haven't got time for a U2 track this evening, but I'll should play one next month. I've got a big one to, uh, to play. I've got loads of them live albums uh, what shall I do next oh let's just have this this was the uh, Sunday 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 oh yeah this was the show that uh, Billy Libra oh, not Billy Friends <laughs> Julie Billy's <laughs> <laughs> Pete brought in for a guy for a session. No. Billy Liberator. Yeah, Billy Liberator uh, a few months back for this show, Transmission. For two hours of uninterrupted brand new music, make sure you tune into Transmission Jukebox each and every Sunday night from 10 pm, playing some of the best new music around right here on Surrey Hills Community Radio. No, it wasn't jukebox. My uh, my transmission advert has gone off the cart screen because I did the transmission show this afternoon from two till four with a live band doing a session, a uh, full plugged in electric live band doing a session from two till four. Catch it on the SHCR transmission Facebook page. If you know an unsigned artist and um, releasing original material, get them to send in an MP3 and we'll play it. Um, most definitely will. Yeah, Chris at SorryHillsRadio.co.uk. You're in concert. With Chris Stagg on Surrey Hills Community Radio. Oh, time is pressing on. Um, let's have this one. It's not one of the artists that was targeted. Did they have anything with Simple Minds? I know Claire said that Altered Images, they supported U2 um, and Simple Minds. In fact, the original boys in Altered Images went to uh, school with um, uh, Simple Minds. In fact, I'm going to do this. A bit of self-indulgence. Just <laughs> bear with, bear with, bear with. Um, that one. Hi, I'm Claire Rogan from Altered Images, and you're listening to Chris on Surrey Hills Community Radio. I think I've died and gone to heaven, but um, anyway, let's have this one. Um, Simple Minds, they were at school with the boys from Altered Images' original band. Um, this is, I know you look like acoustic songs, Pete, so this is Simple Minds' Acoustic in Concert. It's a BBC in concert, uh, recorded at the Hackney Empire, which is a fantastic venue. Um, so this is them, and it's a nice kind of ethos or theme or whatever a bit of a sing along so sing along with it um, about tonight so this is simply called don't you brackets forget about me close brackets oh, yeah. and how could i not introduce you for caution another london girl she's amazing
Yeah, that's got that song's got a significance with you as well, hasn't it? Actually, sorry, second. That song's got some sort of significance to you. Well, it's it was coming out the year I left school. Um, Forty years this year. Forty oh, years. Oh, it's a blink of an eye. It's just wow. <laughs> um, but um, did a school reunion. Uh, in fact, I've got one coming up to celebrate the 40th in May, May the 4th. Um, but for, for the 30th year, 10 years ago, uh, my mate did some filming from the reunion and we put it to that song. Right. Um, it's just kind of that class of 84's song, really. I mean, mm. everyone loves it, but it's when you left school in 1984 and that song came out in 84, mm. you know, don't you forget about me, you know? Yeah. So, um, well, I'm hoping this show is a, a good thing to help us not forget about Billy and the Face Brothers. Um, I'm yeah, determined that people sad won't I'm forget him. I'm sad <laughs> I sort of discovered him a bit too late. I mean, I'm, I'm, I wish I'd kept that email where he sent me the downloads of the tracks or the albums that I purchased directly off him. But, uh, um, but yeah, Just is definitely in my top ten favourite songs, whether it's the live version or the studio version. I just can't stop singing it. It's brilliant. Can I just say, we Please do. did... Yeah. Um, we took a battle with COVID and cancellations, but we <laughs> finally, finally had a, a Faith Brothers friends and fans get together. Um, it'll be new before last now, and there is another one planned. I'm not going to say where, but hopefully a venue close to everyone's heart. Um, and I'll be announcing that at some point, but it will be a bit easier to get to and won't be cancelled five times like it was last <laughs> time and trend the venue changed the dates oh, changed and, right. but in a way it may be more determined to make it happen rather than giving up so yeah, yeah. and are we going to play um, what should have been what could have been a Faith Brothers hit that wasn't uh, yeah amazing amazing song well, before I do that I want to ask you a question what, is, what is your one abiding memory of Billy Frank's Apart from <sighs> Facebook, this is where you got converted to them, but we've seen about that gig. But uh, what's your one abiding memory that stands out for Billy? Well, it's a sad one, really, because last time I saw him play a gig, he did a gig called, he called it his dream gig. He was at the, um, oh, I've forgotten, the, the big church in Islington. Oh, the, um, the Union Chapel. Thank you. He yeah. played there with like a, a backing choir. Yeah. A gospel choir. Um, and I wish that was recorded and released. Well, it was recorded. And it's, it's somewhere in the league. <laughs> if you can help with that one as well, I know. I mean, it's a perfect venue for that kind of thing. Oh, it, it and was it's amazing. Gig, so it's got to be released. Yeah, right? yeah, it's still in the archives somewhere. Um, it's always discussed on the Faith Brothers page that you know that we talked about earlier. Um, but he invited me to the off show party, which is um, I did. I've, wanted to go and get a bed that's how rock and roll I was but it's the last time I saw him oh um yeah. so sad memory but you it saw the gig it was a great gig yeah yeah, yeah. Lee, come on Lee please release it please so, um, even the download would do we'll buy it yeah, but I, I mean to be fair that one Lee wasn't didn't play yeah um although he's because he played on most of the uh, Billy's solo well Faye Bros and solo stuff pretty much all of it really a few things yeah. he didn't but 90% of it he did so if you do have any access to get that release a proper video you know there's, nice. I remember all the screens of it, all the monitors everywhere and everything yeah. but um, back to 1987 uh, the Faith Brothers had a cracking single called that's just that's just the way that it is with me yeah. uh, absolute belgium of a song it should have been massive it should have been a turning point and they should have been huge but it's Life's not fair. Um, We've got the live at the version. On the official bootleg we mentioned, live at Ye Old Leather Bottle, yeah. Wimbledon, 21st of August, 1992. Here is Billy Franks, and that's just the way it is with me. No, no, that's just the way it is. No, no, we will, we will do them. When you're all a bit, you know, drunk or something, we'll start playing the rough stuff. That's just the way it is. You should see me when I'm miles away. Come on, catch me falling for.
something you should overhear. My body's something for you to be near. My loneliness occasion for some big bell ringing. Celebration of sympathy. Yeah, that's just the way that it is with me. Simon is here. Simon, I don't know if any of you saw the video, but that's just the way it is. But Simon was in it. He's here. There that's Simon from Green Hill, who played Freddie. There you go. There you go. There yeah. You go. All their, um, a lot of the, the cast from Green Hill from the 88, 89 were big Faith Brothers fans and then went on to see Billy Solo. So, um, funny old world, isn't it? <laughs> that's a funny old world. But I say, love to, um, the Billy Girl and Alison, uh, Billy's daughters, uh, and everyone that knew yeah anybody who know him and loved Billy Franks and the Faith Brothers yeah, yeah. keep the music alive look out for that uh, share, share the Faith videos Brothers. on your Facebook oh, yeah, and yeah. Twitter and all that just, just keep it out there you know just play the song very good yeah, very oh, good yes. <laughs> <laughs> can't go wrong with that and uh, look out on the yeah following the Faith Brothers yeah the Faith Brothers Facebook page look at it um, see when that uh event comes up that Pete mentioned earlier so I hope you enjoyed the show so it's gone out live look, look at the catch up link on the listen again by the website surreyhillsradio.co.uk sorry uk. get my teeth back in available forever as long as Mixcloud exists anyway so I um, hope you enjoyed it drop me a note chris at surreyhillsradio.co.uk keep safe fit and well folks it's good night from him it's good night from him oh yeah. one of me <laughs>